welcome to West Main. We are so glad that you joined us on the YouTube. I tried to coin a new phrase called the YouTube Maniacs or the West, West. Tube Maniacs. Yeah, I got the same reaction from the staff. Yep. That didn't work. So. Mm -mm. No. Hello, YouTube. Hello in the house. Welcome to West Main. We're so glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, whether you are on YouTube or in the house, we just want you to know that this is a judgment free zone. Um, we don't care where you've been, where you are, whatever's happened in your past, you are welcome here. And we are so glad that you've decided to join us. Unless people call you different names like West Tubians and it's still judgment free zone. Keep your thoughts in your head. <laughs> hey, did you know that we have a whole new sound system? We didn't change our speakers in house, but if you're on YouTube, you've probably realized there's been some stuff messed with. <laughs> if you can hear us, I apologize. Uh, we are in the process of changing out um, some new systems. So what we have done is we've got a brand new board. We got brand new cords. We got brand new hearbacks on stage for our, our people on stage. Um, and that means we're changing up our video and we're changing up uh, what YouTube sounds like. And so bear with us. We apologize. But here's what we've done. We've taken basically um, the eight track or cassette style yeah. of a feed and we've changed it all to like a direct download kind of feed, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah. So we had a 64 channel snake that you plugged everything. We had 64 different channels you could plug everything into. It ran underneath all of our sanctuary stuff. Um, it came up on the stage and you could plug into that. We took 64 different lines, took them out and we mm -hmm. ran one line. And so we are revamping everything. Yes. And eventually um, our video will all run through that too. Yeah. Uh, that one line is called the Cat6 cable. So lots of newness going on and we are revamping. We apologize in advance. Um, but we are going to get that fixed pretty quick. If you will, if you're online, chat with us. If you can't hear something, that helps us out. Yes. And it tells us, hey, uh, something's wrong or I'm not the only one dealing with it. These people are too. Yeah. And so it helps everybody out. If you could just kind of tell us, hey, sounds great. Things are good. Video's blurry. Yep. We've, we've had some different issues going on. So if you'll just let us know what's going on, uh, we would appreciate that. And start, speaking of new, we're starting a new series yes. this Sunday. It's called Rattle, and it's going to be an eight-week series. It is going to be phenomenal, and it really focuses on how God's people respond when their world turns upside down. Yes. And if you have lived at any part in the last six, seven months, our <laughs> worlds have been turned upside down. Yes. Yeah. So this series is for you and me and everybody else. Yeah, it's going to be a great series. We're really looking forward to that. Today, uh, for the first time in this craziness, we get to partake in communion together. Awesome. And so if you're online, we just want to encourage you to take this time right now uh, to go get something. If you have some juice and some crackers, yep. if you have Dr. Pepper and, and cake, you. you know, whatever, whatever you have, uh, we won't, it's, it's not about the element as much as the moment. We're not making fun of the moment. No. We're not... Uh, we're not just belittling that. We, no. we just want you to know that we're going to have a moment and a time of communion. And we want you to have that opportunity to, to join in with us. If you're in the house today, uh, there are little packets in the seat in front of you. And it will it's kind of hard to open. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of go over a flyby real quick. You peel the top part off and there's a wafer. And then you peel the other top part off and you can get to the juice. We'll take part in that in just a little bit. We'll walk you through everything you need to know. There'll be a strapping, young, good-looking man that'll come up on stage that will walk you through everything after our third song today. Um, and then we'll get to partake in the Lord's Supper together. So, it's gonna be to it. Yeah, it's going to be a great Sunday. We're really glad you're here. See ya. Glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching it on a day later than today because we are saving the sound and you'll get some. So glad you're here. 
Thank you for joining us for a new series. The question I want to ask you today is, can these bones live? And as I was saying, I suspect you have not ever been asked or asked that specific question. Can these bones live? It's a 2,500-year-old question that God asked one man in particular. And the answer to the question is as important, relevant, and powerful today as it was 2,500 years ago. You probably not asked that specific question, but I bet you have asked things like this. Will my life ever get back to normal? <clears throat> Will I ever get over this? What do I do now? Can things ever be right again? You ever ask questions like these? All of them. This series today is called Rattle, and we are going to answer, um, I, I think, one of the most important questions, and really the question you're going to see over and over in the book of Ezekiel. The question is, how do God's people respond when their life gets turned upside down? We've all been there, right? We've all, at some point in our life, just had everything go bad, everything flip upside down. Today, we're going to look at a vision, one man's vision that he had 2,500 years ago that he wrote down for us and is going to challenge you, I hope, but more than that, encourage you and motivate you and move you today. We're going to talk about a man named Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel means God will strengthen. Remember, the word God is not God's name. God literally in the Hebrew means um, my authority, my, my foundation, the strong authority. So Ezekiel, uh, you know, names meant something then. They don't mean anything now. But, but when they named this, this kid, his name was the God who strengthens will strengthen you. That's what it means. Um, that's Ezekiel. And in 597, as Ezekiel was serving as a priest, the Babylonian Empire came marching through his country and when they got to Jerusalem, which is where he lives, the Babylonians were marching from their country down to Egypt. And like everybody that marched to or from Egypt to anywhere else in the world, they had to pass through Jerusalem. And when the Babylonians got there in 597 BC, um, there's a little map. Um, the, the arrow on the right is Babylon. The arrow on the left is Jerusalem. Thank you. You're uh, Johnny on the spot back there. When they got to Jerusalem, the Babylonian uh, army... Um, stopped for dinner and for veiled threats. They stopped and they visited with King Jehoiakim, and uh, they basically said, listen, King, uh, we're in charge now, and you can submit to us, or we will destroy your city, your temple, and everything you love. And so basically, without an arrow being fired, Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, submits, and surrenders, and says, okay, we will serve you, Babylon, will be just part of your kingdom. So Babylon marches on down to Egypt, conquers Egypt, and they head back. One of the things that Babylon does everywhere they go, in every city that they capture and, and conquer and, and force people to submit, they always start gathering up people. They start gathering up the useful people, people with a trade, people who can do craftsmanship, people who cook, people who sing, anybody that has a function in society, the Babylonians would grab them, take them, bind them, and send them 700 miles from Jerusalem to their capital city in Babylon. Now, 700 miles is no big deal for us, but on foot, that's a long, long way. And the Babylonians, they kept extremely detailed records. And when they, when they left Jerusalem. They have a list of the 10,000 people that they took from Jerusalem. Um, the king of Babylon said, we took soldiers, sailors, craftsmen, musicians, carpenters, guards, and one keeper of monkeys. <laughs> True story. You can read it in the Babylonian uh, chronicles of time. When they sacked or when they conquered Jerusalem, they took one keeper of monkeys and all these other people, and they sent them back to Babylon. Now, Ezekiel was one of the guys that got transplanted from his home in Jerusalem, moved 700 miles to Babylon. Now, 10,000 people getting taken out of Jerusalem is a big, big deal. And for the next nine years, the people of Jerusalem, they, they don't like at all their situation in life, and they're tired of being um, submissive to Babylon, and so they rebel. And you know what happens? 
Babylon comes marching back down to Jerusalem. They destroy the city. They tear down the walls. They walk into the temple that Solomon built, take all the gold, all the furnishings, everything that was so sacred to the Hebrew people, took all of that, put it on a cart, and then destroyed the temple, leveled it, took it down to its foundation stones. And you know what else they did? They do what they always do. They grabbed every single useful person that was left and pushed them back on a cart 700 miles to Babylon. So you have to put yourself in Ezekiel's shoes and imagine you've grown up in Jerusalem. Uh, an army has come and shipped out 10,000 of you and your family and all the leaders of your city. And then 10 years later, you're living in this strange, crazy land in Babylon by this river with 10,000 of your Hebrew exile mates. And then Babylon decides they've had enough of the rest of your country, so they go back there and they destroy it. And then a few months later, here comes everyone else in town. Some estimates say that uh, approximately 90% of the people living in Jerusalem and in Judah at the time got taken from their homes and moved to Babylon. Can you imagine? I mean, we, we think wearing a mask to shop at Walmart is really hard living. <laughs> That is literally having your nation turned upside down. And 700 miles <clears throat> is a whole different world. It would be like if one day China decided to invade America, and they came and they invaded and they won, and then they took 90% of us and put us all on a boat and shipped us to some province in China to live out the rest of our lives. Can you imagine their lives were turned upside down, and for 70 years, these people had to live in Babylon in what history has called the Babylonian exile for the Jewish people. But God had a plan for them, and God was looking out for them, and God had provided for them a young man named Ezekiel who was taken in that first raid. And Ezekiel was a priest, and Ezekiel became a prophet. And God, I'm not going to read these things today. You have to read these on your own. If you haven't read Ezekiel, holy cow, there's some strange stuff happening in Ezekiel. God showed the prophet Ezekiel some very strange visions, strange things. God asked Ezekiel to do some things that are, are a little bit uncomfortable even for our Bible translators to, to translate into our language. You should read the things that God asks Israel to do. They're weird. Let me just give you one, okay? Just one of the very, very many things that God asked his prophet to do. Um, Ezekiel, for the next week or so, what I need you to do is cook dinner. While you're cooking dinner, you're not going to use wood for the fire. What you're going to use is... Well, human poo is the nicest way I can say it. The original language is much more colorful. But you're going to cook your dinner over human poo for the next week of your life. Don't look at me. I didn't write it. I didn't ask him to do it. Read it in your own Bibles. God asked Ezekiel to do that. It's very, very strange. One of the things that God does is he gives him um, an amazing vision and a message. And throughout the book of Ezekiel, you're going to see this message. How do God's people respond when their world is turned upside down? How do you, as followers of God, what should you do now that your life is turned upside down? Now remember, this book was written for these people who are living in exile in a foreign country, but the principles that we see Ezekiel teach those people are so relevant to us today, and your life can be changed and improved by what God said through Ezekiel to his people living in exile, because their life... All of them was literally turned upside down. Nothing was the same. It was all changing so fast they could hardly breathe. And not only that, they had to live in a foreign land, in a foreign nation, try to learn a new language. There's all these new gods that we're supposed to know about and all these people worship. Everything was different. Everything. And Ezekiel over and over would show them, here's what you do when your life gets turned upside down. Here's what you do when your life gets turned upside down. And we're going to look specifically at chapter 37 where Ezekiel writes down for us a vision that he had and recorded for us for 2,500 years is this vision. 
You've probably heard it if you've grown up in church. If you haven't, uh, this, if this is new to you, uh, this is going to blow your mind. It's crazy. Ezekiel says, The hand of Adonai was on me, and he brought me out, of his, out by his spirit and set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Push pause on that right there, Dolly. So imagine the scene. God has taken Ezekiel. Just imagine it's you, and he's taken you from wherever you are in Babylon, and now you're standing in this hot, dry, desolate valley, and he sets you down right in the middle of this valley, and as far as your eye can see, there's just these sun-bleached, dried-out, white bones. Not skeletons, bones. Just bones everywhere, as far as you can see. You got the picture? This is what Ezekiel was seeing. Move along, Dolly. Thank you so much for your help. He asked me, human being, which is the more literal translation. We, we see it, uh, son of man. Jesus identified himself with this title, son of man. It literally just means God is calling you a human being. Hey, you in particular, human being. You're not that special. You're just a human being. Hey, human being. Can these bones live? Can these bones live? Now, that we have no indication of how much time transpires from, from when God asked the question to when Ezekiel answers. And so imagine you're standing in that valley, bones everywhere, hot sun beating down on you. It is a weird Scene and God says, Hey, human guy, all those bones you're standing in, can they live? I don't know about you, but my first response is, No, (laughs) they're bones. It's a valley full of bones. They've been dead for a long, long time. But Ezekiel has a great answer, and we're going to look at his answer next week. Ezekiel says, Sovereign Lord, you're the only one who knows. You Alone, no. Then he said to me, well, prophesy to the bones. Speak to the bones and say to the bones, dry bones, hear the word of Adonai. This is what Adonai Elohim, the sovereign Lord, says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am Adonai. So Ezekiel says, so I did what I was told. I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise. There was a rattling Sound. Can you imagine? Can you imagine standing in this valley full of dry bones and God says, talk to the bones, tell them to come to life. And you say, come to life. And they just start to vibrate. Can you imagine? Can you, you could see these things just kind of resonating against each other and beginning to vibrate and then they bounce and then millions of bones are just crashing into one another, making what Ezekiel calls a rattling sound. And the bones came together Bone to bone, I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Pause, Dolly. So what happens is they're in this valley. Ezekiel speaks the word of the Lord to the bones. They all come together. These random bones start forming these human bodies, but they're just zombies. There's no spirit in them. There's no breath in them. Here's what God says. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath or the spirit. Prophesy, human being, and say to it, this is what Adonai Elohim, the sovereign Lord, says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as God commanded, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. If you've never heard this before, this is crazy, right? This, even if you've heard it since you were a little kid, this is a crazy vision. And then he said to me, human being, these bones are the people of Israel. These bones are your people. They say, 
your people. Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. In other words, here we are living in Babylon, in exile. We're cut off from home. We're cut off from the temple. We're just going to die here, a big heap of bones. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what Adonai Elohim, the sovereign Lord says, my people, I am going to open your graves and I'm going to bring you up from them. I'm going to bring you up out of your graves. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and then you, my people, will know that I am Adonai when I open your graves and bring you up from them. It's almost done. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land, and then you will know that I am Adonai and that I have spoken, I have done it declares Adonai. Can you picture that scene? Can you, can you imagine being one of these people hearing this vision? You've been stolen from your home. You've been transplanted in a foreign place. Your world is just flipped upside down and none of it makes sense. And now God is giving this message to you from this crazy prophet who eats food cooked on his own poo. And he says, look, you guys are just a big giant heap of bones without me, but I'm going to put life in you. I'm going to bring you back together. I love this vision. This vision is where we're going to stick for the next seven weeks. We are going to ask that question, can these bones live? And you probably never asked that question, but here's some questions you might have asked. Can my marriage survive? I, I know there are people sitting at home trying to watch us on YouTube right now asking this question. Can I win this fight against cancer? Can I overcome this habit, this addiction? Can my finances ever recover from this? Can I ever make things right with my kids? Can I ever pull out of this depression? Can I ever have a life without pain? Can I find someone to share the rest of my life with? Can I stop being so lonely? Can I just feel like I used to feel? Can I teach these children at my house until they graduate? Oh my. <laughs> For many of us, 2020 has been a season where our lives got turned upside down. For many of us, 2020 is just one more year in a long series of years where our lives have been upside down. We've all been there. Ezekiel would call it dry bones. When your life gets turned upside down, it's just like you're just a bag of dry bones. If we're honest, some of us, that's our spiritual condition today. Just dry bones. As God's people, we have to figure out what we do. As God's people, as people who follow God, as people who follow Jesus, we must figure out how do I respond when my life gets flipped upside down. This was the message to the people in exile. And I want to give you a life pro tip. When you're reading the Old Testament and it doesn't make sense, always look for Jesus. Always. Because if you look at the book of Ezekiel, through the, through the lens of the cross, through what we know about Jesus. He is not mentioned by name in Ezekiel, but you can see Jesus in Ezekiel. God told Ezekiel, I'm going to open up your graves. I'm going to bring you up out of them. Did you know that that prophecy was literally fulfilled the day Jesus died? 
Matthew records for us the crucifixion of Jesus. He records his last words, and he tells us what happens the moment Jesus dies. This is, this is prophecy being fulfilled in our Savior Jesus. Jesus shouted out again. He released his spirit, and now he's dead. And at that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. We all know that, but we forget this. In that moment when Jesus died just outside of Jerusalem, the earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. What did God tell Ezekiel he was going to do? Open up the graves. I'm going to open up your graves. The tombs opened. The bodies, hello, of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. You ever see that in the movies, do you? Jesus dies on the cross. The curtain in the temple is torn in two. So much to talk about there. I don't have time. But also in the graveyard outside of Jerusalem, stuff starts to happen. I don't know. I don't know who these people were, and Matthew doesn't say, but here's my guess. My guess is these are some of the people that lived in exile in Babylon who heard the word of the Lord through Ezekiel, say, I'm going to open up your grave and I'm going to bring you out of it one day. And then Jesus dies. And Matthew and many eyewitnesses record for us that all these dead bodies buried in Jerusalem come back to life. <laughs> and not just that, they left the cemetery. <laughs> like, they don't just stay in the graveyard. They leave the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection. They went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and they appeared to many people. What? The Old Testament prophet Ezekiel, speaking to exiles, God says he's going to open up your graves one day, and you're going to come out of those graves. And Jesus dies, and in that moment, graves are opened, and dead men and dead women live just like God said. And he brings them up out of their tombs and they walk through Jerusalem. <laughs> There's more. God prophesied, uh, God told Ezekiel to prophesy and remind his people that he would put his spirit, he would put the spirit of God in his people. Jesus teaching his boys one day said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and, he, and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because, how do you know the Spirit of God? Because he lives with you and later will be. Wow. You, if you follow Jesus... You are a living, breathing fulfillment of a prophecy made 2,500 years ago when God promised there's a day coming when I will open up your graves and I will take you out of them. And not only that, I'm going to put my spirit in you. And here's Jesus, the Son of God, saying, one day my spirit will live in you. Mm. Can these bones live? Can you recover? Can you win? Can you find love? Can you be restored? Can you be rescued? Can your life ever be what you want it to be? Can you overcome the difficulties and struggles in your life? Let's listen to Paul. Let's go home. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power that is at work within us, because his spirit lives in us. Through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish, this is what God wants to accomplish, infinitely more than we might ask or think. The Holy Spirit that God sent to you when you chose to submit to him and follow him 
is able to do something so infinitely powerful that your puny human brain can't even form up enough words to ask or even think about the things that God wants to accomplish in your life. I mean, think about that. We're, we're so worried about the state of our nation, the state of our whatever. We're so stressed about all the things that we see wrong around us, and we're worried, and we're mad, and we're angry, and none of us has been deported 700 miles away, and none of us has had our life uprooted and transplanted somewhere else, and we're still worried, we're still upset, we don't know what to do, our lives have been turned upside down, and God is here saying, He's in us saying, look, you got Holy Spirit power in you. You have resurrection power flowing through your veins. And I can do for you more than your brain can even imagine. Can these bones live? Can they? Can can whatever the struggle in your life is, can it be made right? Whatever is making you so mad right now, could it be healed? Man, I'm worried that only two of you believe that, but the two of you are going to go out of here believing. Man, this is a good time to come up. Clint, you're going to have to plug something else back in, back there. <clears throat> Can these bones live. Thank you, Scott. I want you to imagine your life right now, your situation, your struggle, your pain, your loneliness, your anxiety, your depression, your stress, your relationships that are broken, just your upside down life. Can God make it right? Can God make it right, people? Hey, hey, followers of Jesus, can God make it right? When Ezekiel spoke to those bones, I unplugged your headphones. When Ezekiel spoke to those bones, they started to rattle. Some of you, this week, it's going to happen in your spirit. Something in you is just going to start to rattle, change, give you hope, point to something better. It's because there is the Holy Spirit of Jesus who lives in you, who is able to, according to his infinite power, do more than you could possibly imagine, think, or ask. And he wants to do it now. I want to tell you this. It doesn't matter what your situation is. It doesn't matter what your struggle is. God can make it right today. If God is here, you have hope. If you're not dead, God is not done with you. Impossible has never been a problem for our God. And he doesn't just want to give you information. He wants to give you transformation and rejuvenation and restoration today. And he is offering you an invitation to live in revelation and illumination today. And here's his declaration. You ready? Here's his declaration. Live. 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 Just live. I put my spirit in you. So live. Live. Would you bow your heads for just a second? Some of you sitting here and watching wherever you're watching. I'm just going to say it. You're dry bones. You're in Facebook more than the good book. You've been holding that grudge for a decade.
you enjoy your anger more than submitting to the Savior. You want to advance your agenda more than anything. Dry bones. Dry bones. God says live. God says live. Jesus said he is life. So if you intend to live, it starts by submitting to Jesus. If you have never done that, if you've never made a conscious, willful decision to submit to Jesus, to follow Jesus, today could be your day. You could do it right now, just right where you're sitting, right where you're watching. You can pray to Jesus. Jesus, I submit to you. Forgive me. Help me follow you. Wash me clean. Help me live. Some of you did that maybe when you were a child or maybe at a camp, or some other time in your life. But if you're honest, your spiritual life right now is just dry bones. Well, I got good news for you. God makes dry bones live. You can live today. Repent. Turn back to God. Submit again to God. And let him heal you. Lord God, my prayer in these next few moments as we sing, that we would also prepare our hearts to not just take communion, but to be in communion with you. To not just remember and reflect on your sacrifice and your death, but to live because you live and your spirit is in us. I pray in these next few moments that we would, we would sing and worship as people who are alive and that we would remember and reflect as people knowing we have a future because of you. I pray all this in your name.